This is currently China's most popular read. The biography of the late Apple founder Steve Jobs has been flying off shelves since its release on October the 24th. It is no secret the Chinese love him. Steve Jobs changed the world and influenced many people. You can learn from his spirit and get inspired by his biography. I'm very much impressed by his contribution to the whole world. Thanks for coming. It was Jobs' vision that made Apple the world's most valuable brand. And dreaming up products like the iPod, iPhone and iPad branded Jobs an innovator and visionary. Titles most people would want to bestow upon themselves. But being a genius is something you are born with and can be learned. Or can it? The city of Ningbo in southeastern China is certainly willing to try. It announced an ambitious training program to produce 1,400 Steve Jobs in the course of five years. The city is investing about 8 million US dollars towards the project, which aims to turn trainees into a group of innovative leaders. But thinking out of the box seems incompatible with China's current education system. Students here study hard, reading from textbooks, working out complicated mathematical equations, and reciting literature. A typical high school day consists of eight classes, starting at 7 a.m. and lasting till 5.30 p.m. Then, though it's loads of homework, students need to study on their own after school till 10 p.m. or even midnight. All the hard work is aimed at scoring high on Gaokao, China's standardized college entrance exam, which determines which post-secondary school students can apply to. In China, your Gaokao score could very well determine your future. But such a rigid system doesn't have much room for creative thinking. Which is why a growing number of Chinese parents are sending their kids to schools like this. I am at the Beijing City International School. It is one of the 15 schools in the cities that offer students a Western-based education, which concentrates less on memorization, but a little bit more on critical thinking. Most of the students at the school are foreigners whose parents are working in China, but 20% of them are local Chinese. Like other international schools, BCIS's curriculum is based on the International Bachelorate Program, which is a complete 360 from what most Chinese are used to. Our curriculum is rigorous in a different way. The traditional fact learning curriculum of many schools in many national systems, not just in China, is about learning large tracts of information. The, the kind of rigor that we have in this school is on the quality of learning. So instead of asking students to spend many hours learning many facts, we try to lead them and inspire them to think at a higher level, both critically and, and creatively. Under the research-based teaching strategy, students are challenged to ask questions, work together to solve problems, learn skills, and most importantly, be creative. But coming to a school like this has a hefty price. Nursery school starts at over 20,000 US dollars, and the final year of secondary school costs just over $30,000. It is a price some Chinese parents are willing to pay. Yes, I wouldn't say it's cheap. Definitely it's a little bit costly to send your kids here into international school. But um, for me, um, I would think, I don't want to think this as an investment, like a payoff or return. Um, but if financially it is acceptable for, for your family, I think it's definitely worth it. Um, because your kids get to grow into who they are, um, rather than be molded into some sort of uh, standard. Today we did our last paper on our grade two K, our grade two amazing race field trip. About the transportation we took back to, on the way back to school. With the average annual income for Chinese in Beijing being around just five thousand US dollars, attending an international school is still only for the elite. The vast majority of Chinese parents have no choice but to send their kids to traditional schools. But some, like Jane Zhou, are making sure that children get a well-rounded education beyond just memorizing textbooks. I won't send my child to international school because I want her to stay and develop in China. But the education system in China is way too exam-oriented. 
there is no much room for creativity development. That's why I started to hire foreign tutors to teach my child English when she was in the fifth grade and sent her to some extracurricular classes for better education. The supporters of China's school system will argue its benefits. When it comes to standardized exams, Chinese students score the top in the world. With China's debut in the program for international student assessment last December, students from Shanghai surprised experts by outscoring their counterparts in dozens of other countries in reading, math and science. But both China's way and the Western way cannot guarantee any student will become the next Steve Jobs. Jobs himself never attended any exam-oriented schools. He also dropped out of college. So, whether the city of Ningbo can succeed in its plan to train 1,400 people and essentially clone Steve Jobs remains to be seen. Perhaps some things just can't be taught. For World Inside, I'm Tang Bo in Beijing.